Okay, good morning. Welcome to lecture 2.1, Introduction to SimPy. Today I'm just going to give you uh, a brief introduction that sort of matches with the uh, lecture notes to some degree. See how I work with SimPy. Um, SimPy will be the symbolic uh, computer-aided algebra system that you all will use uh, for much of the work here. We're going to build up equations of motion using symbolic tools. SimPy is the um, uh, most widely used um, tool like this uh, in the Python um, uh, ecosystem, but also uh, probably the uh, most widely used open source um, computer aided algebra, computer aided algebra system. Also, um, I'm a, I've been developing and helping on the SimPy project for uh, over ten years now, so um, I, I'm uh, quite like it and enjoy it, and um, I hope you all do too. Okay, so uh, this is the lecture notes that we'll uh, follow, uh, basically, but I'm going to just open up a Jupyter Notebook and now have these uh, at a little larger size, so hopefully that video quality is better. I'm going to open up a Python 3 notebook here, and the first thing that we are going to do, uh, let me do by here to name it um, we're going to get it imported so in Python we have to import packages you've learned about that a little bit all right I always uh, earlier uh, I'm going to always import simpy like this it's going to put this sm variable in my namespace so that I can uh, access all of the many functions of simpy if I type simpy dot tab ipython notebook shows me an enormous list of functions here and you probably see all kinds of math words um, so simpy does an awful lot so uh, another nice thing though is that um, simpy will display in the jupyter notebook very nicely rendered mathematics so to ensure that we get the full uh, um, view of all those mathematics i'm going to call this init printing function and that is going to enable um, this display and if you try it without it you'll see the difference but I'll just Im import uh, that or, or call that function all of these um, these two lines are going to be uh, at the top of every notebook where we use SimPy all right so the first bit is uh, how do we work in um, with symbolics so I'm going to just create uh, some symbols and this is the most common way uh, gamma maybe um, x t y z right, equals sm there's a symbols function and in there you want to give a string and I typically just copy exactly what I typed over here because usually you want your variable name to be the same as your um, symbol name but I'm going to show you one uh, scenario where you may not want that so let's uh, put, um, instead of theta, maybe I just want a little shorter, okay? Maybe th is, is sufficient. So I can have a different variable name than the symbol that I created. So I'll uh, shift enter, execute that cell. And now, um, if I just copy all of these variables that I have now available in the namespace, and remember the who is function, let's, let's actually use that who's um, right I have all these variables in my namespace and it tells me there are all these symbols uh, okay so I'll copy uh, this again the variables and then if I just paste them here it will print them to the screen notice they display as now mathematical symbols and even it recognizes theta as a mathematical symbol gamma as uh, a mathematical symbol so that's quite nice we get these uh, symbolic objects all right uh, once we have uh, the symbols available, we can make expressions, but I want to create one more type of symbol, um, a function. So sometimes we're going to work a lot with uh, arbitrary functions that we don't know what the actual mathematical expression that defines that function. We're going to be trying to arrive, get to that in the end, and we can make functions um, uh, in that way that are just arbitrary. So how do you do that in SimBy? Um, one way is... Um, the uh, sm.function class 
So I can, if I make a function f, right, here, I have f. But to make it a function of some variable, I can make an f of t, right? I can make a f of x, y, z. Right? So now this is sort of an operator. And I can give it any, I can say that it's a function of any uh, variables. So that's how you make a function. It uses the um, parentheses there. So we have symbols, okay? Um, and then we can create these uh, functions of any other symbols. And you can create functions of functions too, um, uh, in that sense. But this is primarily uh, the two types of things that we will be creating here. Oh, you maybe one more thing on symbols that is nice. You can do things like a1, a2, uh, a3 equals sm dot symbols, and then um, if I just do a1, a2, a3, and then we display them, notice that they'll automatically know that we have um, subscripts there too on the symbolic form. Okay, we can create symbols. The next thing is that we want to create uh, expressions. All right, so these are mathematical expressions uh, that are combinations of these symbols and functions. So if I make an expression one, um, I can just do a plus b uh, minus x, for example. And then if I print it to the screen, I've got a symbolic expression there. And we can build up any kind of mathematical uh, expressions that you would like. Um, you can include the functions. So expression 2 equals um, f of t uh, plus uh, 2 times f of x comma y comma z. So now we can just build those in, and you can combine them. Um, like if I come back up here and edit this and put A uh, over B. Oops. We can combine symbols and functions into these expressions. Um, SymPy comes with also quite a few um, built-in uh, transcendental functions or, or elementary function, fun, functions. Um, we will be using trigonometric functions quite a bit. So we can also access those from SymPy. So if I want the sine of something like f of t, the sine of f of t, um, minus uh, sm dot tangent of a over b, um, and then we could maybe divide that by another one is uh, the natural log of um, gamma, right? So I have expression three here. Now I've used some uh, pre-made functions in, in SymPy for uh, these common mathematical uh, functions that you will need to use. And um, there's a long list of them and you can check where I linked in the lesson notes to the documentation of those. All right, so we've got expression one, expression two, expression three. Um, we can also have um, I think let's let's go with that and see if I need to create another expression. I will. So I want to give a, look, a couple notes here on printing. Um, so this sometimes confuses people because uh, what you see is not what is always um, um, under the hood in SymPy. So if I use the print statement on, let's do expression three, I get this text output of that and that looks um, fine. Uh, if I use the built-in Python wrapper function representation on expression three, same thing, right? But it gets gives me the string instead of just printing it to the string. Um, SymPy has though this function dot s wrapper. Okay, so this is the symbolic representation. Everything uh, that you see is actually stored as a tree in SymPy. So if I let me start with expression one there because that will be easier to see. Um, this is actually the fundamental representation 
of this. Um, so I have an add that adds A and B, um, and then it adds uh, four things, actually. The um, first here is a multiplier of negative 1 times x, and then it adds three things, A, B, and then this multiplier of negative 1 times x. So this, if you ever um, see an output here and you're confused, sometimes you need to check this to make sure you understand what is fundamentally there. And um, why that matters, I'll uh, get into. But let's look at some other things. Simpy can take this S wrapper and make lots of things out of it. It makes these representations. It makes this nice pretty output representation um, there's a p print function in simpy so if i give that to expression three there notice that this is not as, as nicely rendered here but it is sort of a, a an ascii form of the rendering so it does its best job to display in a reasonable mathematics but this is just plain text so that's sometimes useful um, how does it make this nice um, mathematics? Well, there's a LaTeX printer, and the LaTeX printer then gets transformed into the nice mathematics. So if you use yet LaTeX, you then know that um, LaTeX does a good job. LaTeX does a good job at displaying mathematics. So if I use SimPy LaTeX, right, I get this LaTeX form. And notice it has these double um, slashes. That's a little confusing. Um, and that's just because uh, uh, Python has to um, the double the, the the backslash means something in the Python string specifically, so it has to sort of cancel that out by adding those. But if I do print, it might look more familiar. But you get a basic LaTeX representation. So every object is represented like this, but I can print it and see different views of it. There's even nice things. I think this is available. Maybe I want to transform my expression into some C code. So I'm going to pass expression 3 and see if we can actually get some C code. Uh, something's not supported there. Let me just try expression um, 2. Close my parentheses. Um, also not there. Let's just try a simpler one for the purposes of this. Right, Not, not uh, magical there, but let's try um, if you use MATLAB, you can even, I think the Octave Code printer is there. Yeah, so let's try Expression 3 with Octave Code. Octave is an open source MATLAB clone. Um, it also will try to print this. And I guess I'm sure what thing it doesn't like. Oh, it doesn't like the uh, function f of t. So we'll 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 talk about that later when when that. That is, but this is MATLAB code. You can see the dot divides that are present, and and log and tan are, are available there. Okay, so just to know that what you see from the interpreter is not always exactly what the true symbolic thing is, and and that's all I want to say about it now. But we'll hit some issues probably in the future where that might be important. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do a lot is we're going to take derivatives. We have to calculate. We're going to be working with differential equations in this class um, uh, quite extensively. And we want to take derivatives so that we have differential equations. We're going to be taking derivatives with respect to time, mostly, because we're interested in how things change when they move. And SimPy um, relieves you from all of the um, pencil work that you have to do to take derivatives. Um, so, if I take uh, expression 3, we can try that one. There is a diff function. I can tell, I want to take the partial derivative, is what this stands for, of expression 3 with respect to one of the variables there, uh, or any sub-expression, in fact. If I take the partial expression with respect to A, partial derivative with respect to A, it will calculate that derivative for me. So that's quite nice. I don't have to remember what the derivative is of tan a, right? Simpy does it for me. And then you can um, do um, 
also a, a uh, partial derivative um, of multiple variables. So this has multiple variables in it. If I do expression 3 of a, and I'll store it in uh, partial 1, we'll call it that. We've already communicated, commuted, uh, and I'll do part partial 2 equals sim diff. Uh, and now we'll give it part 1. And now let's take respect to b. So that is the part two. Now we have the partial derivative with respect to A and then with respect to B, and we get this nice, nice derivative. Saves us a lot of time. Um, the key thing though is this will do the derivatives for you, but you will need to know what a derivative means. So if you still feel uncomfortable with that in this class, we're gonna you're gonna have to ensure you have that knowledge. Like we are working with how functions change at given at different points in the function, how they change over the whole uh, area of the function, and uh, and they're going to relate primarily to uh, positions, right? The velocity is the, the, the derivative of the position, and the acceleration is the derivative of the velocities, and we'll be working with that a lot. We're going to also need to use partial derivatives of various other variables, um, but um, we'll get to those things okay so that's the basic way though to take um, derivatives there is one other thing to note there's two ways to do this if i have expression three and i do a dot i can uh, access a diff on that so the diff uh, function is also sort of attached to the expression object so you can also do expression three diff with respect to a and I get that derivative, right? So those are two ways. All right, that's the basic idea of derivatives. Um, you have to know, you know which one you're taking the derivative with respect to. Oh, yeah, there's one more thing uh, that's worth saying. You can take the um, um, twice derivative, and we'll often do that. So expression 3 also has the function of t inside of it. So if I take dt, right? Um, I get the derivative with respect to t. Okay, and notice that it applies the chain rule there because f of t is inside of the sine function. If I want to take the partial, if I want to take the uh, derivative of that expression three with respect to time twice in a row, um, you can do diff t two. Okay, and that is the exact same as expression three dot diff t, and you can even chain this, diff t, right? So those are equivalent, so it can take uh, multiple derivatives. So if that was a expression for a speed, I'm sorry, a position, and I take the twice derivative, I suddenly get acceleration with respect to time. Okay, that's the basics of derivatives. Now, I want to talk about, we have these symbolics, but we're going to be working with numbers eventually. Like we want to know numerical answers. Um, you know, what is the uh, speed in meters per second that we are traveling at any given time with our spacecraft or something. So the next thing then we will do is uh, a numerical evaluation. So there's a number of ways to do this in SimPy, and um, the simplest way, and let's just take expression one, remind ourselves what that is. So I've got A, B, and X, and say I want some, uh, I want to uh, replace exactly A, B, and X, each of those terms, with some number. Well, this is where um, dictionaries come in. So I'm going to say I have a replacement dictionary. And I'm going to take my symbol A, and I want to replace it with 5. Symbol B, replace it with negative uh, 38. And symbol C, replace it with uh, 102. Okay, so I make a mapping of the replacements that I want to do. And we can display that. Um, X is what I wanted there. Yep. So these are the replacements that I want to make. Um, expression one, the most common way that you'll see in SimPy documentation is substitute, right? So if I do so, dot subs and I give it that dictionary, 
it will replace the numbers and you'll get some numerical simplified version of that. Uh, we're going to be using in class though uh, the function x replace more often. x replace subs can replace um, more complex expressions but if we're only replacing a single uh, entity um, or symbol or function with a number x replace um, is faster uh, and that'll be helpful when we have long expressions and, um, and, and more appropriate but it works the same way so if I do replace uh, give it the dictionary um, I did the wrong expression expression one we get the same answer okay so these um, are quick ways to numerically evaluate in SymPy right notice though if I look at the type of what comes out of this it is a SymPy integer it's not a Python integer so if I did negative 135 and just typed it that is a normal Python integer so these two things are different objects if I wanted to convert uh, this to a Python integer that's uh, not a problem I can do that with the int function and now I get a um, a Python integer and I can check that with its type here okay so I can convert these so those that will matter in, in some cases when we're trying to translate symbolics to mathematics such as point I'm sorry to numbers I'll, I'll point that out and I'm going to show you a couple other uh, results too that will um, uh, maybe give less expected okay uh, let me make a new expression here expression 4 um, SymPy has a symbol for pi, so I'll, I'm going to grab that, pi over 4 plus um, x times y, da, 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 da. yeah, this, that's sufficient for this demo. Okay, so I've got this expression 4, it's got this symbol pi in it. Well, we know that pi equals this irrational number, 3.14, da, 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 da. Um, you would expect if I replace x and y, then maybe we would get that, um, get some kind of irrational number. So I'll do an x replace, and then do x uh, 12, y um, 24, something like that. The pi is going to stay there. Simpy is not going to evaluate. Uh, symbols like this and there's a couple of core constants that you can access in SymPy. Um, let me update this to yeah, let me put a SymPy sign here. This is actually we'll give a little better demo. So I'm changing expression 4 now it's sine times x times y. Notice that it doesn't evaluate the sign either. Okay so this is going to be common. You can put numbers in there but these functions and any core constants will not be evaluated. If you want that to be evaluated um, numerically then you need to um, use the eval f function okay so if I do eval f by itself notice that it expands pi and I and divides it by 4 and I get this ir irrational number here but x y is still there uh, to s fix that I can do eval f and then um, give it a subs optional argument and then pass the dictionary do that y24 now the number evaluates to an irrational floating point uh, number in this case so uh, that's good that's how ELF works I'm going to copy that statement and look at this type it is a SymPy float, not a Python float. So similarly, if I want to convert that, I need to turn it into a, uh, a Python float. I check its type, and I will get a Python float. Now there is a fundamental difference between those two. A SymPy float can have as many decimal places as you can, as you desire. So, and to demonstrate that. 
if I call this same thing and I use the in argument here, that's the number of uh, pre the precision number, the number of decimal points essentially, and I say I want uh, uh, 52 decimal places there, then I can get an inf infinite number of there. I can put as big as big as number as I want, right? Prove that thousand, uh, thousand, and I get, you know, I can evaluate pi out to as many places as I want, right? Well, this is a not a computationally efficient uh, thing, and uh, but maybe it's useful when you need that many decimal places. We don't need that many decimal places in general, so we really are going to want to try to get these simpy floats back to Python floats, and, and um, there will be some default ways that you won't even have to think about it. But it's worth knowing that the CVAL F is giving you this arbitrary precision uh, simpy floating point number, and if you need to compute compute convert it then um, you need to convert it in some way to a Python float with that function. A Python float is only going to give you the machine precision for your computer, right? It's going to be like uh, e to the negative 16 on your 64-bit uh, Windows, Mac, you know, um, Linux computer, right? That any PC that you buy today, you're going to get a certain number of um, a limited floating point precision. Okay, that's typically what you work with. One last thing. The most common thing that we actually are going to do though is use a function called lambdaFy. It's not a very useful function name, but what it does is it takes a SymPy expression and it converts it into a Python function that you can then evaluate. And you've learned about, excuse me, Python functions. So there's expression one. Let's just convert that expression there. The way this works, I'm going to write eval expression one will be my resulting function name, and then I'm going to use this lambdaFy function. I first need to give the arguments of this function a, b, and x in a tuple, and then I give it the expression one. This creates a function, and I can look at its help. Even it creates this function. It takes a, b, and x. It's created with lambdaFy. It's going to evaluate this expression here. All right. So we use it just like any other function. If I give it uh, twelve, I'm going to give it floating point numbers here. In, in this case, thirty-four point three and minus uh, two. It evaluates that expression. And notice what type it is. Two by default, you get a Python float. Right? So this is going to evaluate things at the floating point precision of your computer, and that's typically what we want to do. So I will be most using uh, lambdaFy because we're basically going to be converting SymPy expressions numeric to numerical functions, like so. Um, and yeah, that's how you use lambdaFy. All right, next topic, matrices and linear algebra. We use matrices, we use linear algebra in this class to a great extent, and SymPy can help us with that. SymPy has a matrix object that you can uh, create. So I'll say mat1, sm.matrix, okay? The, the syntax here is a, uh, a set of nested lists. So you have an outer list, and then um, sublist will give each row of the matrix. So if I do one, two, that's one row, comma, three, comma, four. So here I have a two by two matrix. I have two lists for row one, and then row two. And if we take a look at that matrix, there is our matrix. And we can see that we have a two by two by calling dot shape. Yeah. Uh, the matrix has all kinds of linear algebra properties. For example, I can take the determinant of that, calculate the determinant for you. Uh, you can see all of the different, I'll, I'll tab that again. There's, if you scroll through here, you'll see a lot of familiar. Um, 
linear algebra things, but you'll have to check the SymPy uh, documentation for, for those. We can also fill these matrices with symbols. So if I do SymPy.matrix, uh, get my outer bracket, and then I'm going to do each row. We've already got some expressions. So what if I just do expression 1, expression 2 on the first row, and then expression 3, and expression 4. Yeah, spelled right, and then close that, get my brackets right, that 2. There we go. So now I've taken each of the expressions that we had above, and I've put them in one uh, entry of this matrix. So now I have a symbolic matrix made up of all these different expressions. Well, uh, what can we do with that? Some nice things. Um, we always also have the diff function. So if I diff that mat matrix with respect to T, it will calculate the different uh, the partial derivative of each of the expressions with respect to T and give us that result. Um, so that's nice. We can uh, take derivatives of each entry very quickly. Um, the other another thing would be we have two two by two matrices. So mat one plus mat two. All right, I can add matrices. Right, no problem. Um, if I do mat one times mat two, this is matrix multiplication. Okay, so it'll actually do the matrix multiplication there to give us this uh, matrix multiplied. If you want to do a, uh, if you want to multiply entry A, uh, entry 1, 1 times the other entry 1, 1, that is the so called Hadamard product. So then I could give MAT1 and MAT2. Okay, this is what MATLAB does by, uh, well, no, that's what MATLAB does if you do dot times, right? So that's the difference. Um, a little verbose, but we really don't do this much uh, with matrices, to be honest. But that is matrix multiplication, and um, uh, my default there, and you can, can subtract. If I do mat1 raised to the uh, 2, that's going to do the matrix product, uh, I'm sorry, the matrix exponential. So it's going to be, um, should be the same as mat1 times mat2, right? Mat1 times map two. It's not raising each element to, um, sorry, times map one, right? That is equivalent to that. So it's doing, these are matrix operations, not um, these uh, element by element uh, operations like this Hadamard product. So we can do those things. Um, there's determinants. Um, I don't know what's another useful you're going to be asked in your homework to, well, no, we're not on this one, so we'll skip that. The, is there anything I can just look that's useful? Oh, yeah, a couple other nice things, right? There's a sim, pie, sim uh, to give you uh, an identity matrix as a 5 by 5 right? SM dot zeros takes um, two entries, so if I want a, two by four matrices of zeros, then I can do something like that. All right, you can check the documentation to see all of the, and the tutorial for somebody to learn more about the matrix operations. So we'll be working with matrices. Um, they'll simplify a lot of our calculations. Um, and in one way, we will be working with a lot of linear systems. So we're gonna need to solve systems of linear equations. Let me first create a couple of equations. I'm going to say um, lin expression 1. And I'm going to say a times x plus b squared times y plus um, let's do sine of uh, gamma times Z. All right, so this is linear in A. Well, it's linear in A, but it's also linear in X, Y, and Z, which is what I'm trying to set up there. So lin expression 1. So I have a linear expression in X, Y, and Z. 
right? So there's linear coefficients. Let's do one more, expression two. And I'll, um, what other functions do we have? Um, SM dot, let's just do sine of f of t there times x plus, then I'll just give a z term um, of sm dot log of f of t times z. Linear expression 2. All right, so I've got two expressions. Um, these would be uh, linear equations if they are equated to 0. One quick way to sort of visualize that this is not a proper equation object but if I do um, lin expression 1 in here and 0 right, this is the equations that uh, that we're uh, that we're working with and that's a nice way to sort of display a at least something that looks like an equation all right so I've got these two equations I want to solve for Let's solve for x and z, right? I have two equations, and if I say x and z are the unknowns, uh, I could try to solve those. SimPy has a, a default solve function that um, can do solve lots of different equations, nonlinear, linear, etc. Um, the uh, way to do this is if I give a list of the equations, lin expression one, lin expression two. And then I want to solve for some variables, and I just list those x and z were the two, and I press sn.solve. Um, and also, yeah, I think you always it's always best, it's going to be nicest and give you a consistent output if you do dict dic, dic, dic equals true, so for dictionary output. All right, so let's do that. Uh, that's actually, it's a little... Well, this is what it does. All right, so I'm going to put result. Let's store this in a, a result. So I think this is this bet. Notice it is actually a list. Right, this is the outer brackets of a dictionary that says this is the solution for x and this is the solution for z. The reason it's a list is because sometimes you get multiple solutions uh, for systems of equations, and then it would have those multiple solutions in this list. So to get just the dictionary. We have to get the first item of the list. Now we have the dictionary. Um, and uh, I can say result dictionary equals that. Right. Now I can extract the expressions for those solutions. So if I do result for x, I get the x solution. And then in the same way we use that EQ, you could display this nicely. You could say X now equals that result. Right? And that is, gives you the linear solution to this system of equations. So that's uh, solve. Okay. Um, and I think you can even give it a hint that it is a linear system and um, if needed. But uh, that is a, a way to solve linear systems in SimPy, probably the most common. Um, in the notes, though, I'm, I teach you a matrix method of doing that. And if you know your, system, your, your, your equations are linear, uh, we can put them in a matrix. So linear matrix of expressions equals SM dot matrix. And I'll make a column matrix of lin expression 1 and lin expression Two and mat expressions. Okay, so now I have a column matrix of the expression side of those equations, and um, you uh, should recall from linear algebra solving a x equals b. Right, that is a linear system. We have a the coefficients to all of the linear variable unknown variables x a vector of those. Um, equals b, whatever the right-hand side is, okay? You solve those from your numerical methods class and your linear algebra class uh, using Gaussian elimination, right? So SimPy ha can do that. There's a quick way, if you know these equations are linear in x and z in our case, um, then 
the Jacobian, the partial derivative of these expressions with respect to the linear variables, the variables that they're linear in, will give the coefficients. So a quick way to do this is um, linmat expressions dot Jacobian with respect to x and z in a list there. If I do that, I get our matrix A, actually. Okay, so this is A and the AX equals B. Those are the coefficients to the linear, um, uh, to these linear variables, X and Z. And then if I want to get B, well, B is everything else moved to the other side of the equation. So we move it to the other side of the equation, we have to give it a negative, and the vector B is anything that doesn't have, that isn't multiplied by X and Z. So you can eliminate those by replacing x and z with 0. All right, and that's actually supposed to be lin mat expressions. I'm going to replace with 0, give it a negative to move it on the other side of the equation, and then I get my b. So I now have a and b, and I want to solve a times x equals b. I want to solve for uh, x, right? To do that, to do basic Gaussian elimination with a matrix, if I take a matrix and I call LU for um, a lower triangular, a lower upper decomposition, um, maybe it's not the most obvious, but this will do a basic Gaussian elimination solve. LU solve b, it solves the equations. Right. And notice they don't look quite the same as the ones here necessarily. That one looks almost the same, but there's this A and A. It's not simplified in quite the same way. Um, that's fine. These are mathematically equivalent, but as we know, we can manipulate things and it might not be simplified in the same way. So that's how you solve a linear system. We're going to do this matrix one uh, most from here on out because it's going to be the most straightforward and efficient way to get what we want um, for the class. The last thing that I want to talk about is then simplification. So we notice that these two expressions from solve and from LU solve didn't come out quite to be the same. Simp I can do some simplification. All right, for small expressions, uh, short ones, ones that sort of fit here on the size of the screen, that's uh, worth doing. For, we're going to work with very, very large expressions in this class. So anything larger than that, um, this um, we're not going to really use uh, simplification. Okay, so if you try to simplify expressions and it is taking longer than one minute on your computer or vocarium, then um, you probably shouldn't be simplifying, okay? And um, But let's see what we get here. If I take that solution, I can just try, there's a function called simplify, and if I do a l u solve of b inside of there, it will try to simplify things. And notice I do get a simpler result that looks more like the solution that simplify, the sm solve gave. Right, so that that is a basic way that you can solve things. Um, simplification will work more easily uh, if you know what type of simplification you want to do. So for example, if you know you want to do trigonometric simplifications, there's a trig simp function. And if my expression is sm dot cosine of uh, gamma, squared plus sm dot sine gamma squared. Let's just look at that expression first. We know that this expression with trig simplification should equal to 1. So if I give that expression to trig simp, it can, it'll do that. Right? So if I know I'm doing trigonometric, it's best to use this function instead of simplify. Uh, one other warning is things may not always simplify the way you want. They um, 
uh, may not be able to be simplified. It may return the exact same result that you get. Um, simplification is not uh, like a guaranteed thing that happens. There's an, sort of an infinite number of answers, and it's even debatable like what form is more simple than another form. So we have to cho choose that. There, there's no mathematical answer to what form is a simpler form. Um, I think Simpy tries to make fewer uh, operation counts, fewer pluses and minus divides, and things of that nature, but it's uh, that becomes ambiguous sometimes too. Uh, but be wary about using this only for small expressions. Would I bother with it? You don't need to simplify unless you need, as a human, to look at the equations and make some sense of them. We're going to get expressions that are so long, there's no human that is going to make any sense of them. Uh, so don't simplify, all right? Um, and you'll see me using it very sparingly in, in future lessons. Okay, the last thing that I showed you is this idea of uh, simplification called common sub-expression sub elimination. We will potentially use this. Um, it actually will take a complex uh, system. So this, this uh, solve here is a little complex. And it'll break it down to all its, um, let's do solve that and take the different differentiated with respect to t maybe to get a nice nasty expression that's probably yeah that looks pretty nasty so if i do sm.cse common sub expression elimination on that and this returns two things um uh the uh sub expressions and the simplified expression. So let's look at the simplified expression first. Notice that I have this simpler matrix there. Okay. Um, and if I look at sub expressions, well, what are all these x terms? Well, this defines each x. xo equals 1 over a, x1 equals f of t, x2 equals sine of t. Each of these things are repeated, um, potentially repeated multiple times. So we can see that um, x6 and x6 are twice in this expression, 11 is twice in that expression, 12. So we have these common expressions, these small little chunks that are repeated uh, throughout. So if it, this, this method will identify each of those common expressions name it a new variable, and then you get a simplified uh, matrix with these new variables, and then this tells you what all of the uh, other variables are. Okay, that is the lesson on SimPy. That is the introduction of the tools in SimPy that we are most likely to make use of. There uh, are way more tools available, and you can look at the documentation. SimPy does a lot of uh, things, and um, and there's some uh, nice online videos and such that you can check out if you want to learn more about SimPy. But it's a nice tool. Let's just do symbolic math in the computer. And um, you know, when I went through uh, school, I had to do them all by hand. You know, you wear a, a, a mark into. You know, I think my th my uh, middle finger here has still got my pencil mark from all of my pencil writing out sine of this, cosine of that for pages and pages and pages. Um, so you get to be saved from that from it for a bit with SimPy, uh, but you do need to know what you're doing, right? You need to know what a derivative is. Why should I be taking it with respect to certain variables? What does that mean? How do I properly substitute things? What uh, what system of equations am I trying to solve? Right? You're gonna you still have to know the con uh, the concepts of calculus and linear algebra to be able to work with this effectively. Okay, that is um, lesson 2.1, Introduction to SimPy. See you in the next video.